Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Wall Street Mojo. Friends, today we are going to learn a concept of days of inventory outstanding. A very fantastic concept to get into because this helps in, 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 in terms of deciding various things in the company. I mean, uh, let's say it's, it's basically a financial measure. It tells us the investor how good the company is handling its inventory. Now in this particular uh, tutorial, we'll look at the financial measures in detail. So let's get into it. You can say the another name of the days of inventory outstanding that is DIO is also called as the days of sales of inventory. Now days of inventory outstanding, it tells us how many days a company takes to turn its inventory into the sales. For example, let's look at the graph over here and Colgate's day's inventory outstanding has been stable over the year and it's currently close enough to 70.66 days. However, when we compare this with the Procter & Gamble that is PNG, we note that the PNG's day's inventory outstanding has been decreasing over the years and it is currently to 52.39. So first we will look at the formula and then we'll try and understand it in more further way. I mean, if we try to interpret see the days of sales outstanding interpretation I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that what is the cash cycle exactly so the cash cycle is the DSO that is the days of the sales outstanding you can say or I'll just start with the cash conversion cycle cash conversion cycle that is the days cash okay conversion okay that will be equal to will have four element in this first days of sales outstanding okay we'll add something to it and we'll deduct something from here so we'll add days of inventory we'll add what days of inventory and we will deduct if any the days payable outstanding so this is what we are going to deduct over here and which will result and give us the answer the cash conversion cycle there are three component in the cash conversion cycle as you can see the first one is the days of sale in sales inventory the second the, uh, the the other twos are the days of the sales outstanding and the days payable outstanding now that means we can easily say that the days of the sales inventory is one of the stages of the cash conversion cycle which translates the raw material into the cash now in the in, in the formula we can see that the inventory is divided by the cost of goods sold and uh, we we can also say that the, the, this basically helps us to understand the proportion of the raw material in the total cost of sales so then we multiply that proportion by 365 days which allows us to see the proportion in terms of the days so let's take a very easy example to illustrate how the whole thing works let's get into the example let's say there's a company zing okay which has an inventory of the inventory is close enough to 60,000 so I'm just writing over here as inventory and it has the inventory close into 60,000 the cost of sales is close enough to in the neighborhood of uh, let's say 3 lakh okay so find out the days of inventory outstanding of company Zing now this is a very simple days inventory outstanding example all we need to do is just to put in the figures of the formula so here's the formula the days of inventory the days of inventory outstanding will be equal to we'll say the inventory divide by the cost the days of the sales outstanding is going to be the inventory divided by the cost the cost will be the cost of sales so this forms our formula now over here we'll put the numbers and we'll we'll get into the answer before that you need to multiply this whole thing into 365 don't forget to do this so over here our days of sales is going to be 60,000 that is our inventory the cost of sales is 3 lakh into we'll have to do 365 so the final answer that we are going to receive for the days of inventory is going to be 73 days 
Okay, so this is how you calculate. That means over here it takes 73 days to translate the raw materials into the cash for the company Zing. Now, how would you interpret the DIO? It's, it's called DIO as an in, I mean as in a short way as an investor. So first of all, the days of inventory outstanding is a measurement of the company's performance in terms of inventory management. So if the days of inventory outstanding of a company are low, it means two things. First of all, low days of inventory outstanding means that the company has been effectively using the inventory. And secondly, low days of inventory outstanding also mean that the company has not been storing inventory for the required demand of the company has been writing down the values of the inventory. On the other hand, we need to look at the high days inventory outstanding as well. And the high days inventory outstanding also means the two things. High days of inventory outstanding means that the company has not been able to translate the inventory into sales quickly. It also means that the company has been keeping obsolete inventory as well. Since both the low and the high days inventory outstanding can be interpreted separately, it's important for an investor to follow a few steps while interpreting the low or high days inventory outstanding. First of all, the investor should also look at the other companies in the similar industry to see whether the DIO is also low or high in that in, in the case of the com of, of the other companies in the similar industry. And if yes, then take the next step. And if not, the investor should look other financial ratios of the state company first. Now, in the first step, the yields a similar result then the investor should look at the other companies in the different industry to be sure about it. I mean, she can gather the information of other companies in, in the other industry and then compute the DIO to find out whether the similar company in the other industry are also providing the similar results. The point of all of this is just to be ensured whether the company in a particular industry is doing good or not. So looking at the different companies under the same industry and the different companies under the different industry will give you a very holistic perspective to the investor. Lastly, the investor should look at the other two ratios of the cash conversion cycle as well as the other financial ratio of the company as she wants to invest in. Now, what statements to look at to find out the days of investory, uh, inventory outstanding? If you are a new investor, it may seem difficult for you to find out the inventory and the cost of sales that is or the cost of goods sold. That's why it's a, it is important to know certain aspects of days of inventory sales. See, while calculating the days of inventory outstanding, we usually take the ending inventory or else we can also take the average of the beginning and the ending inventory. So average. To find out the average, all we need to do is just to add up the beginning inventory and the ending inventory and then we just need to divide the total by two. So to find out the inventory average or ending, we need to look at the balance sheet and you will see something like closing stock in the balance sheet. So for cost of goods sold, you need to pull out the income statement of the company and then you need to see the column under the sales. You will find the item of cost of goods sold. The difference between the sales and the cost of goods sold is the gross profit, which will be mentioned in the income statement. Use this to and, and put into the formula and you would have company's days inventory outstanding. Let's get into sector based example let's say we'll take an example of airline sector. Now I'll show you inventory days outstanding of a top companies in the airline sector. As you can see, there are a couple of airlines, American Airline Group, Alaska Air Group, Azul, China Eastern Airline, Coppa Holdings, the Delta Airlines, GUI Intelligent Airlines, JetBlue, Latam, Southwest, Rhinar, United Continental and China Southern airlines you can see the days of the inventory outstanding over here for each of this company the inventory processing days of the airline sector is less than one month for most of the companies as you can see it's 22 9 6 17 20 18 as you can see in majority it is less than month one month i mean rhino holdings rhino holdings over here i mean has the lowest inventory processing days that is close enough to 0 0.33. That's really good. That's not, not even one day. Whereas for the United Continental Holding, it is it is close enough to 23.33. That is close enough to 24 days. Now let's get into the example of automobile sector. I'll show you some of the example for automobile sector that what exactly is the condition over there. 
Now, as you can see over here, it is, this is the complete list of the uh, automobile sector. Ford Motors, Fiat, General Motors, GM, Honda Motors, Ferrari, Toyota, Tesla and Tata Motors. Uh, I think everyone knows nowadays what Tesla is. Who is Elon Musk? One of the great entrepreneur of, of the history. Now, talking about on this particular note, you can see the days of inventory sales has for some companies greater than one month that is fiat has 44 days and uh, in terms of the lower number it is 24 days for ford so and the highest is 113 so if it is blocked more it's not good okay see the more it is blocked the more it's going to create problem okay now this is example of the discount store as you can see there is detail of burlington stores kotsko wholesale Dollar General, Dollar Tree Stores, Target and Walmart Stores. Now the days of inventory outstanding for all of these companies, as you can see, it is close enough to more than two months in, in majority of the companies. The lowest is for Costco that is close enough to 30 days, while the highest is 82.2 for Burlington Stores. So the Burlington Stores has the highest inventory of days close enough to 83 days, while Walmart Stores has close enough to 44.21. Now let's get into the example of oil and gas sector and see what goes on about this particular scenario. Now as you can see this is the complete list of the oil and the gas sector. I mean this is the, the list of the top companies in the oil gas sector along with its market cap and inventory days of sales outstanding. Philip, CNOOC, EOG, o Occidental Petroleum, Canadian Natural and so on and so forth like Apache, Hess, uh, this other list. I mean the inventory days of uh, outstanding is varied for oil and gas sector. Oil and gas sector. On one hand there is Apache that has inventory pro uh, processing days of close enough to how much? It is uh, 4 months. 112.69 that's enough to close to 4 months. And Conoco Phillips has inventory of inventory of day sales outstanding is less than one month you can see how there is a huge level of difference of inventory of day of sales outstanding in various companies and different in, in the different industry so the case about the working capital as an investor you also need to keep in mind that whether the company has required working capital at any given moment or not and to do that you can also look at the inventory outstanding let's say a company has a low dio meaning it takes a longer time to transfer inventory into cash now what if the days of the inventory outstanding decreases that means the days it takes to turn in the inventory into cash also decreases in a nutshell it means the company would have more cash since the dio gets faster so as a result the working capital of the company will also increase on the other hand if the dio increases the days it takes to turn inventory into cash also increases. In a nutshell, the company would have less cash. That means the condition of working capital of the company will also deteriorate. I hope you have got a complete idea about what goes in, what goes out in uh, this particular ratio. Thank you.